Promised. Hi guys, it's Elena from Marco Learning and we are back live. We're going to wait for our special guest to join us. Sorry that we're a little bit late, technical issues, but you know how it goes in the year of 2022. We've all had our share of technical issues. Anyway, tonight's guest is going to be Heather Garcia. Um, she is a very accomplished teacher um, and soon to be accomplished author as well. I'm just really excited to have her on tonight because you all are going to get comes to talking about AP Lit and what to expect with the test. So last night we got to do AP Lang. If you are taking AP Lang, you're free to stay but I definitely want you guys to check out last night's video because tonight is all about AP Lit. Can you hear me okay, Heather? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, seven minutes of tech problems. I'm like breaking a sweat over here. I'm so sorry, guys. Don't sweat. Don't sweat. Now that you're in the room, you can lay back and relax. See, I'm on the couch. I kind of like wanted to have a comfy feel. <laughs> Oh, you look wonderful. It's so good to see you. You look amazing, too. Gosh. So good to see you. <laughs> All right. Oh. So it looks like we're good. Our audience is good. Let's roll into this. Okay. So AP, actually, first, I want to ask you, who are you and how are you credible to give us information about AP reading? <laughs> So I am Heather Garcia. I am a curriculum and instruction specialist for um, secondary ELA for school districts, but I have been an AP Lang and Lit teacher for almost a decade. I am an AP reader. I help write a lot of the study guides in the curriculum at Margo Learning, and I help train teachers from across the nation. It's fun. Let's plug, go check out those study guides because they're amazing. And not just because how they're authored them, but they're actually super duper amazing and super helpful and just like robust. You're going to get a lot from that. So like go check out those study guides after this live, of course. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you haven't already and you have questions for Heather, make sure you drop them in that little question mark speech bubble thing so that they stay there and I can see them. If you put them in the chat, I may see them. I may not. I'm going to try to scroll, but there's a lot of things going on right now. All right. So let's get started. I'm excited. Now, what is your usual mindset when you go into grading? I just want to celebrate student success because you guys have worked so hard going into this test and this is like your shining moment. This is your culminating effort. And all we want to do is award you for the amazing things you've done. Absolutely. I love that. It's like, it's like the coins when you're, when you're um, playing video games and they just, they pop up, just collect all the coins. <laughs> all the points. Just, let me give you all the points. How, how do you get, selected to become an AP reader? So you have to have been an AP teacher for a number of years, and sometimes that number changes, mm -hmm. and you have to apply and go through a process to be chosen. So it's really an honor to be selected because not everybody gets selected, and you can rest assured that everybody who's in the room wants to be in the room because they chose to be in the room, and that's a nice feeling. That's awesome. Yeah, like nobody's being forced to, to be there, which is pretty cool. Okay, which I don't know if you can answer this one, but I thought it was interesting that they asked, do you get paid? Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> it I is... should hope so. It's a <laughs> lot of work. <laughs> right, like we love y'all, but it's summer and we need to get paid. So we get paid. Don't worry. <laughs> We're not volunteer. <laughs> okay, and do you look at the exam as a whole uh, to see if it deserves to pass or not. So we're actually assigned a specific question. And for me, the question has changed each time that I've graded. So one year I might be reading question three. And then if we get through all the question threes, like for the world, they'll be like, okay, we need help on question one. And then everybody dives over to question one and helps like fill the gaps. So wow. I get to see any single student's full test. So that's nice. That is nice. That is nice because then you, you know, you're not like there, you're the one grading every single one of the essays for one student. You're just grading the same type of essay, which I feel like probably makes it a faster process too. Well, and it means that um, you become an expert in that prompt. So if it's a poem that like took me a hot minute to get through, then whenever kids are citing and they're like in line six and then they keep going, I'm like, oh, I totally know what happened in line six. Mm -hmm. It makes it a lot easier 
not necessarily faster, but easier for me to connect with the kids, I feel like. Yeah, you don't have to like switch modes. I love it. Yeah. So how do you recommend I structure my rhetorical analysis essay? This is a big one. <laughs> oh, okay. So rhetorical analysis would be Lang, um, but I feel like it's the Oops, same for- Sorry, Lang. I apologize. I was reading from Lang. No, okay. it's gonna work for both. No, nope, it'll work for both. <laughs> they do. When okay. you're structuring your essays, whether it's rhetorical analysis for Lang or literary argumentation or the um, prose analysis, you're going to want to structure by themes, by topics, by big overarching things that you're noticing, not by device. You do not want to have an entire paragraph dedicated to metaphors. Gross. Give me a reason <laughs> to care about the metaphors. Wrap it up in something. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Like <laughs> Put it in a pretty packaging, put it in some bows. <laughs> yes, give me some razzle dazzle, people. I love it. Okay, will they be familiar with what, oh, this is really good. Okay, sorry. Will they be familiar with what book I'm reading for AP Lit Q3? So first maybe tell us what mm -hmm. Q3 is because some people may not know, uh, but then tell me, will they be familiar? Perfect. Okay, so question three is that last question that you approach, and it's that literary argumentation where they give you that open prompt and you get to choose from a novel of your choosing. So depending on how well written the essay is, first of all, let me back up. Most <laughs> of you, most of your readers are exceptionally well read. This is our living. This is what we do. We read <laughs> books. We talk about books. We enjoy books. We're a little obsessed. Think about all the books that you all have to select for your students to read. There's a bunch of books that didn't make that cut. So you read even more than what, you know, your teacher presents to you. Yes. And so that rest assured that we've read lots of books. But let's say you pick an obscure one that I haven't read. Well, as long as your essay is making a logical enough argument and I'm not questioning you and being like, mm, this sounds like a movie plot. <laughs> then I'm going to keep going. And I am going to trust that the argument you are making is sound and cogent. Okay. If I am struggling or I'm like, I have no idea what this book is. I haven't even heard of the title. I'm going to pass it on to somebody else in the group. And we will continue to do that until we find someone who's read that book who can give you the fair reading that you deserve. And if we still struggle, the table leader, like the, I'm sorry, the question leader for question three will take on your essay and you will become like the question leaders project. Oh, so, wow. That's yeah. okay. So you probably don't want to get your essay passed around like that if you can avoid it, right? I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's because mm -hmm. um, we're not like giving it a, we're not discounting a score every time we do it. There's just a little button at the bottom of the screen when you're like, hey, somebody else may want to take a look at this one because I'm not familiar. So it's a nice feature. So that answers one of our other questions, which is, do you get my original paper? Like if I turn in a paper to you, is that what you're grading? So no, it used to be that there were like folders and papers and piles and boxes and oh, now it's all scanned in and we are looking at your handwriting on a screen. <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> so like how should i how should we be presenting our handwriting like you know does it does it make it harder now that it's on a screen i find it to be challenging on the screen when the handwriting is exceptionally tiny okay or exceptionally wild <laughs> when the <laughs> handwriting just reaches a point where the loops are more than I can handle or they're like super sharp angles or we all know the handwriting that you look at it and you're like, oh, and it takes a second. It's not that I can't get through it. It's just that it takes a couple reads. That's all. Um, but the screen does add a little bit of a barrier. So if penmanship is something that your teacher has mentioned, you may want to work on like they're not kidding. <laughs> they're, they're for real. Like they are not making that up. <laughs> But we're not going to count you down for your handwriting. Like, that is not a factor. Like, we will read through your essay as many times as it takes. And once we feel that we've gotten a feel for it, then we'll start looking for the elements that need to be scored. Like, we won't let your handwriting be a barrier, but just it slows us down, for real. Yeah, I, I get that. So I like that. It's like the flip side is, you know, don't stress 
overly stressed and you're like, I have to change my whole handwriting in the next two weeks. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just practice, you know, just try it. clarity. <laughs> yeah. um, how are easy ways, how are, okay, hold on. I don't know how to ask this one. Are there easy ways to gain points versus lose points? Yes. Okay. So for AP Lit, for all three essays, mm -hmm. it specifically says in row B where you have the, you could earn the zero, one, two, three, or four. If you do not make multiple claims in your essays, you are automatically in the lower half of that range. And if you can make more than one claim that you can back up with evidence, you are automatic, not automatically, but you are closer more to getting yourself to three or four. <laughs> Oh, nice. I like that. So see, that was, that's a really easy way to find yourself on the higher end of the scoring scale. Indeed. Will you take points off for misinterpretation of a text in an essay? So your thesis um, can still earn the point, mm -hmm. uh, but there is, a, like, sometimes you can get a two in that evidence and elaboration portion because of a misinterpretation, it's in the rubric. So- In the rubric? Oh. Yeah. So if you are mildly off, but mm -hmm. you're on the right track, mm -hmm. I don't think that counts. If the poem is about death and you are writing about aliens, we're off, like you've <laughs> messed up. So, you know, like there's a gradient there. Like we okay. can handle some, we can handle some interpretations that are not what we would have done. Yeah. Well, if, if an interpretation is not spot on, but it has strong argument. You're good. That... We will always err on the side of the student. Always. Oh, that's nice. The customer's always yeah. right. <laughs> Okay, what about spelling words correctly and using the right grammar? How important is that? It's only an issue if it becomes an issue. So if your grammar or your spelling is impeding my comprehension, it's gonna play a factor. As long as you're not impeding my comprehension and I can keep cruising, it's okay. Like, okay. try your best, but you're gonna be fine. There is yeah. no portion of the rubric that asks if you spelled properly. Really? See, that's new information to me. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> you do have to write uh, in English. That's on there. <laughs> well, that's good to know, too, because we definitely, we, like, that's something that I think here in America we don't really understand is that AP is international. Right. So you may very well have students on certain tests that are not native English speakers at all. And even if you're in America, not native English speakers. Right. Yeah, my best friend in high school took AP Spanish, AP Lit, um, and one other AP class, I can't remember which one, as she was learning English. So, wow, kudos Impressive. to her. <laughs> Turned uh -huh. out her English ended up being really well because she was well read by that time. So, <laughs> let's see. Will, let's see, that, that one's already been asked. What are your biggest pet peeves when reading FRQs? Oh, um, Probably just when students summarize the passage. Mm -hmm. So whether you're summarizing what's happening in the poem, summarizing what happens in the excerpt for question two, or summarizing what happened in the novel, mm -hmm. that it only is a pet peeve because I know that it's not earning you any points. It does nothing on the rubric. And I just want you to start earning points. So I'm like, oh my gosh, stop summarizing. Because <laughs> I want you to, you know, I want you to find success on your test. So is that just a waste of a student's time to go over what's already there a hundred percent awesome you guys <laughs> golden nuggets here i'm telling you please listen how much emphasis is placed on cohesiveness of the timed essay so it's actually part of that second row is that we can follow a logical progression of ideas so it's really important yeah yeah that's kind of like what makes you a good essay writer like more advanced not that you just have to be able to seal the deal and also have that, what do they call it? The golden thread that goes through everything. Yes. Well, and if you think about the goal of College Board, like College Board wants you to earn credits to prove to colleges that you're a competent reader and writer. And if your essay is lacking cohesiveness, they can't confidently tell the college like, hey, they're good. Yeah. Like, hey, you could probably use a comp class. 
Yeah. And that makes sense because you're going to need it. For, you're going to need it for the rest of college. You will have for paper coming out of your ears. You'll be like, this is not even a course that should require. This is photography. Why am I writing an essay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> does length matter? Would a concise essay still hit all the points along as a long one would? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you but can the look. The answer is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> because you have that row in the middle for evidence and elaboration. And if you are too concise, you're not elaborating and you're not convincing me of your argument. And so no. No, I need a little bit of length. Sorry. <laughs> Should we label anything on the essay to make it easier for the readers to find? No, we'll find it. You don't yeah. need, yeah, we'll find it. We don't need Easter egg hunts. We're good. Seasoned <laughs> pros here, guys. Seasoned yeah. pros. Yep. <laughs> yep. Is there a mental outline an AP student should have when writing under time constraints? Oh, I love that because this mm -hmm. is such a challenge. And this is going to go back to the question I answered earlier, organizing by device or by theme. Ra I'm sorry, not device. Organizing by theme or like central idea or claims mm -hmm. rather than organizing by devices. That is my main tip yeah. as far as how to organize. Okay. So yeah. no device, no literary devices as overarching themes to write under. Got it. <laughs> And as you look at the prompt, when you break it apart, if it asks you multiple pieces, mm -hmm. those multiple pieces can be your paragraphs. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So kind of use the, the structure that they've already given you if they've given you a structure. Yep. I love it. So how many exams does each reader grade? Oh, it depends. <laughs> um, Hundreds. Do you all have stats? Is it like a, a, a giant jumbotron of who's in the lead? <laughs> no, but we actually, because it's on the computer screen, we have like this little speedometer. And it's like, here is your speedometer for how many you're reading per hour. And then we have another one for accuracy. Because as we're grading, there's like another person who's coming back behind us and grading and like telling us whether our scores match theirs. It's really cool. Um, and I yeah, and I love it because it provides just another level of confidence for the students that like your essay is getting a fair shake. Right. Um, so yeah, we've got like these little speedometers that we follow. It's fun. <laughs> okay. So here's a question that's not on here, but I want to ask if two graders do not agree or two readers do not agree, what happens next? So it'll go to a table leader who makes the final decision and they are like super AP experts. They have to go through a really rigorous training or they have to be like the top of their field to get to be to that point. And they get to make the final decision. They're the winners. Wow. Okay, cool. So <laughs> we won't just let it lie and do like an average and cut the change. We're, we're actually going to send it to the table leader. So like you said, you really do get a fair shake, which also tells me, it gives me confidence, but it also tells me like, if I don't do as well, I have some skills that I need to work on. Yeah, I get one getting into the reader program. It really boosted my confidence in the college board process because I'm seeing all the things in the background that you just don't get to see as a teacher. And they really put a lot of effort and time and care into this. It's impressive. That's so awesome. Ooh. Yeah. I kind of want to be a fly on the wall. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. So we actually already answered that question, how you handle handwriting that you can't read. And I absolutely love that answer because I was always terrified. Um, my mom was a teacher and she'd always make me like rewrite every, every. So I was always terrified that like I was going to do poorly because my handwriting wasn't up to par. Um, but not all teachers are like my mom. So she was a tough cookie. Uh, what states, are AP readers from? All of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Every single last state. Awesome. All of them. <laughs> and, um, ooh, this is a good one. What words can you abbreviate in your essays? Honestly, I read right past the abbreviations. I know that there are probably other graders who might notice them and like 
be a little irritated, but mm -hmm. seriously, don't show up on the rubric. I would not do it too often because mm -hmm. it can impede comprehension and yeah. that is a problem. But yeah. if you, based on habit were to do like the W dash O for without, and you just kept going and it happened once, like, I'm not counting you down for that. Like I get it. You're saying without and you're moving on, but yeah. if you, you are shortening a lot and it's clear that you're trying to do some shortcuts mm. that might be a problem but if it just slips don't panic just keep going so text lingo for the whole thing not really great no. but if it slips just make the adjustment and keep moving don't lose any sleep over it a hundred percent exactly okay. I love it so be a good uh, uh good at testing yourself like knowing yourself and knowing how well you've been doing with that and if you need to catch yourself go ahead and do that before you end up doing it for the rest of your essays okay so we do have some time so i want for anyone at this point who's confused i really hope that there's no one confused about what type of essays are on the ap lit test at this point but just in case we have anyone who is still in the dark can you please explain to us what those three questions are. Yes, so the first one is a poetry analysis. So you're gonna get a prompt and it's gonna ask you to look for something in the poem. And then you'll get a poem that most likely you've never read because mm -hmm. College Board does just an amazing job of scouring all of these publications to find the most obscure poems. And sometimes plants are attacking people and sometimes landladies are like creeping through people's houses when they're not home. And sometimes <laughs> juggling on the street, like they find the wildest poems. But you should know that any poem they give you, there's going to be a double meaning. Like there's going to be whatever the literal meaning is, and then there's going to be some sort of deeper meaning. So just make sure you're looking for both. Okay. Uh, yeah. And be then the, the what? I said, so be on the scan, be on the lookout for that, that second meaning. Yes. And then the second question is going to be your prose analysis essay. And this one is my favorite because they pull excerpts sometimes from short stories sometimes from plays but oftentimes it's from novels and it's from novels i wouldn't have necessarily read and so going through they just it's really enlightening to see these excerpts from different stories that i wouldn't have approached mm -hmm. and so they give you the prompt and then you have the passage and then you get to write about it so that's fun and then question three is the one where you get to showcase all of the work you have done all year long because they give you a prompt and they give you a list of 40 titles. 50% um, will be by female writers, 50% will be by male writers. And those are just jumping off points of books mm -hmm. that you could use mm -hmm. to answer the prompt, but you don't have to. You can use any book that you have studied for this course or any course to be able to respond to this prompt and you get to really just show off your awesome reading abilities and your analysis skills. Now, what should a student do if they get to that Q3 and they're like, oh my gosh, I haven't read half of these books. Oh, forget the list. I cover it up. I don't even look at it. So I read the prompt. I cover up the list. I jot down a couple of titles I could write about. And then I look at the list and I'm like, oh yeah, those are there. But at least I've got mine written down. Like I just cover it right up. I like that. It's kind of like reverse psychology so you don't spook yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know when I, no one taught me this. And when I read that list of books, I like immediately became itchy. The room was hotter. <laughs> I was like, um, did everybody else in this room read these books? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like I was a lazy reader. So it really made me feel inadequate. So I love what you say, like, cover up the list. Don't even worry about the list. Write down a couple of ideas, then look at the list. And really, the list is there to jog your memory if one of the books yes. were on there that you had read. So sometimes we do. We forget about that one-off book we read two years ago that would be really great for this question. <laughs> it's true, right. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So what is one piece of advice that you always give your students and you hope that every single student listening to this heeds? Oh, you're going to want a really good pen. I know that that sounds ridiculous, but 
pens write differently. And if you end up with a crappy pen on test day, you're going to be so sad. So grab a couple, test them out. Maybe all your friends get different packs and like everybody try, find one that you love, bring a couple of them and be prepared because that is the single most tangible thing that you can do to prepare for that test. Yes, I love that. And me personally, I love pens. I go through pens a lot. And I notice when one of my kiddos have taken my pen. So I know what pen I like. And be picky. Be picky about your pens. That's such great advice. You don't want to be the one ending up with the really frustrating pen that you got to etch into the paper to work. Right. Like you don't have time for that and it'll just frustrate you. It's unnecessary. Absolutely. Oh, it's, this has been so wonderful. I'm so glad that we had you on. I'm so glad I got to come and I'm so sorry for the tech problems at the beginning. Listen, this is blame Instagram. We love you, Instagram, but it is a complicated relationship. Well, thank you guys so much. Actually, let me check really. Okay, there were no questions that came in because I I was like so set with questions. You guys did a really great job of sending them in in advance that I was like, oh, okay, there's no questions down here in the below. But anyway, um, leave us with, because I, I want this little carrot to dangle in front of students to um, give to their teachers because no offense, but apples, we get too many apples as teachers. A really great gift would be your new upcoming book. So please tell us about this because I'm excited. Oh, so I, my sister and I, she is a fellow teacher and we worked together to collaborate on a book and it's called Three Minute Tips for Teachers. And so every chapter is under 750 words and we get to walk teachers through like the beginning of the year to the middle of the year to the end of the year and all of the little challenges that teachers go through, especially new teachers who just don't know yet. Um, That is so my little sister is in her third year of teaching I think so I'm going to is that the book yes I'm gonna gift her she doesn't know it yet but I'm gonna gift her the book um and possibly my mom too just to you know sometimes you need a refresh right thank you so yes it comes out May 6th and you can get it anywhere books are sold oh right in the middle smack dab of AP season (laughs) your teacher may need that pick me up honestly (laughs) after AP season. (laughs) But guys, this has been so much fun. Make sure you check out all those free resources. YouTube, Marco Learning Channel, go check it out, okay? I can't say that enough. Go to our our website. We have free study guides, many of them authored by yours truly, right here. (laughs) And like, it just makes no sense for you not to be preparing using these resources, okay? You're gonna see some, I think we even, don't we still have the, um, the old videos where we are talking through the prompts? Yes, those are still on the YouTube channel. We have a full practice test that's on the website that's free. Yes, oh my gosh, guys, too many resources to not be taking advantage of. Um, I guess I do wanna ask if you have any tips for our nervous kiddos taking multiple choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're approaching the multiple choice, try not to overthink it. Try to go with your initial reaction and try to go back and give yourself some textual evidence. If you are choosing between two options, like go back to the text as many times as it needs. There are times I have to go back and it's five, six, seven times in a span of 15 questions because I have to prove to myself that I'm getting the right answer. And I'm good at this. Um, <laughs> like, so I mean, there's no really, really good at distracting answers. That's, that's the key. They're tricky. Mm-hmm. And the number one tip as a test taking guru, I hate that word guru because I never feel like we've made it. But anyway, as someone who's really, really good at taking tests, Make sure you're going back and eliminating the things that are wrong. Stop looking immediately for the right answer because you're going to fall in some traps inevitably. Look for those wrong answers, get rid of those, and then choose from what's left. And you just feel a lot better after that. (laughs) Yes, that's really good advice. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank Thank you for joining us tonight. Guys, we're going to pick up tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. So we're going to be 12 p.m. Eastern time with Danny Sanchez, that human geo guy. I'm super excited to see him again. It's like a little reunion with all of my Marco, Marco learning family. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, 
All right. Bye, guys. Until next time.